Welcome back. It's over 20 years since in August 1992, Hong Kong first celebrated a gay parade week. Part of the celebrations involved a planned march from the Central Ferry Pier to Lan Kwai Fong. The march was cancelled partly because too few people were willing to take the risk of expressing their sexual orientation in public. Things have changed. A new series of gay pride marches began in 2008. A third was planned for 2010 but cancelled. This year's was the best ever attended. Last Saturday, an estimated 5,000 or so people took part in the 5th Hong Kong Pride Parade, gathering in Victoria Park and marching to Tamar Park near the central government offices. Put on your red shoes and dance the, blues. the dress code for this year's event was hot red, and over 40 groups and companies, including JP Morgan, Citibank, Barclays, Goldman Sachs, and Nomura, dressed up to take part. For the first time, they were joined by the chairman of the Equal Opportunities Commission, York Chow. The organizers say they'd also sent invitations to Chief Executive Lang Zhanying and Government Bureau Chiefs, many of whom had replied they were too busy to come. Despite that, Organizers say the number of participants was a record high. In my mind, Hong Kong was an open country, it was an international city. When I came here, I was completely discriminated, mistreated. Shasa is a pharmacist. Born in South America, she moved to Taiwan to study for her master degree at Taipei Medical School. But to receive her scholarship to pursue her degree, she has to change the identity in her passport from male to female. In September, she decided to come to her national embassy in Hong Kong to apply for a new passport. When I, I, I went to the customers and I... I told them that I come here to Hong Kong because I want to issue a new passport and actually the embassy of my country, they knew about me. These officers at the beginning, they started laughing of me. They were started laughing that, oh look, this is a man dressed as a woman. And look, you know, they were actually looking at me, they were laughing. And I was like, what the hell, why they are laughing at me? Then they took me to a small room, two guys, two police, two officers, and they started to forcing me to be naked and they start touching my body, they start touching my boobs. And I was telling, why are you doing this? Why there is not a woman or a doctor or someone, someone that might be in here just to make sure that things are, go, are done in a proper way. Because you are just two men, two guys, I don't know what the hell are you talking about me. And you are just touching my body as, as, as the way you want. The immigration department tells the Pulse the Shasa arrived in Hong Kong on the 16th of September and was unable to provide any supporting documents or contacts regarding the purpose of her trip. The department also said it had tried to contact her country's consulate but couldn't reach anyone until later in the afternoon. Finally, Shasa was able to enter the SAR. It took her until 7.35 p.m. to get out of the airport. The department says that its officers did not subject her to a body search during the detention period. The Customs and Excise Department says in a written reply that Shasa was transferred to its officers by the Immigration Department for custom clearance. It acknowledges that its officers did conduct a body search, but Shasa remained clothed and expressed no objections to the search. It continues that Shasa's passport identity is that of a male, and under the department's standing instructions, a person may be searched only by a customs officer of the same gender. Customs officers deny touching any sensitive parts of his body. I really don't care how beautiful is the city, uh, the skyscrapers, uh, the Victoria Harbour, whatever. Hong Kong only 
right now for me has negative things. As I told you, my life was destroyed here. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in Hong Kong is helping Shasa find a third country to go to. She has, she says, lost her nationality and can return neither to her native country nor to Taiwan.对于变性人跨性别人士的认识很少甚至存在了很严重的误解最好的例子就是今年五月当中审法院判W案胜诉的时候有记者就走去访问出柜女同志歌手何韵诗就跟他说喂阿诗啊W胜诉就是说变性人